Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wired Up with Mark. Today I'm going to be making a sequential switch and that's like a sequencer uh, but instead of having little sliders as the inputs you're going to have inputs as the actual inputs and we're also going to we're going to have it two-sided so it's going to have uh, inputs that it's selecting between and it's selecting whether it's sent, what output it's sending it to. Uh, so what I'm going to start with first is uh, I'm going to come into here and uh, to, to the add module menu here and go into my user and in, in my uh, library I have all of these little um, uh, these little things that I use to, to build modules with that I uh, kind of this little toolkit that I created as I was building the module library with a lot of reusable uh, parts um, I just wanted to show you that this is something you can do to build up with your own toolkit um, this toolkit is available on the forum uh, and so I can go like the counter right and I have two counters here this counter will just count up uh, let's see, clock. And this counter just counts up forever, right? And you can reset it just by hitting that reset button there, and it goes back to zero, right? And then there's other counters, this, this other counter that I use that has a lot of, it's more fully featured. And you'll see this one at the heart of the sequencer module, okay? So it's got, you, you can gate the input, you can reset it, uh, you have the begin control and the end control. Let's say, like, just for now, we'll put this at 7. Uh, and the max count is at 7, and the direction is 1, meaning forward. And let's have the count here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And whoops. Oh, what did I? What did I mess up here? <laughs> the begin control. Max count. Why isn't that? Maybe, maybe it. No. Huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's fine. Yeah. There we go. I, I, I put seven on the end control, which is. Yeah, there we go. So uh, the controls, it, control meaning it, it is, is kind of abstracted as like either a knob or a slider or some other kind of uh, zero to one control. So um, for some reason I'd put the seven there, but uh, this is, starts at the beginning and goes to the end and I could flip this around and go backwards like that. Um, anyway, so that's this, this counter. Inside of it, you'll see that there's you know, a bunch of these nodes that are kind of going around doing different things. Um, eventually I want to come back and redesign this. Um, I, I feel like it could be simpler. I feel like somehow I could make this a little better. Counters are kind of interesting and, and there's different behaviors that you want to kind of add to them. But counters are really the thing that's at the heart of a sequencer because you need every clock pulse needs to count up, down, or in some other interesting way to select um, one of the inputs. So what we'll be doing with this is we'll um, we'll have a switch here, right? And we have this mux switch, and we're gonna have eight inputs, so we put eight channels there. And we have the select counter, and we'll waveform out here. And one here, and three, just so you can see that it's counting this way, so seven. Value. Okay. So it's going, you know, up this way. So actually, it's going, yeah, the direction, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so it's counting up this way three, seven, one, three, seven. Um, and you can imagine this is going to be the outside of the module where you have these inputs, but then I also want to have these outputs. So I can have like a DMUX pair uh, where I have this input and then uh, seven, oops, sorry, eight. So this is going to be the module, right? And you have a sequencer that's going over here looking at these different uh, inputs and then it's going to send this to here and you can either choose to just run this and, and have it set uh, to zero, so you, it's always going to one output, or it could also be cycling to different outputs, 
or you just have one input here and then this is cycling to different outputs. So you could have one signal coming in uh, through the MUX and then be cycled to different outputs. You could have many different inputs coming in cycled to one output or you could have many different inputs cycled to many different outputs. Uh, and that's just how we'll, we'll, we'll work this out. So. Um, what we're going to need is two sequencers because we'll need to control the sides independently from one another. And I think, you know, I, I started this uh, a couple times already and have been thinking about it. What do I want to do first? So I think what I want to do first is design the UI. That's it, usually when you're, when you're kind of thinking, oh, okay, what, what do I want this module to do? Um, it's a good uh, place to start with is just imagine what it would look like if you had all of your features on your panel uh, already fully formed. So what I do is I'm going to start this here um, as size and let's do, well the height is going to be 350 and then the size, um, do multiples of 60. Uh, so let's start with the 120 at first. Because I know it's going to need to be a little wider than these regular slim modules. So we have these, like, like for example, a clock. I'll pop over here. Clock. Um, so this module is 60 wide. Uh, and you can think of that as sort of like, I guess it's like 4 HP or something um, that you're, uh, that's the Euro rack equivalent. And so I'm going to make something that's like double wide from that. Um, I think that'll be enough space to fit everything in here. Uh, well, no, no, that's right. Six, six HP is what that is, because it's every ten is like an HP. Uh, every ten um, units is is like uh, one HP. Yeah, right. So we can see this would be like ten. That's like a one HP module. This is a two HP module. Whoops. Two HP module. And then, so if we have 120, that would be a 12 HP module. Okay. This is all a little arcane. If you, if you don't know what your rack is, um, I understand, but just bear with me. So, what I need first is a bunch of outputs or inputs. I'm going to go to module input, and I'm going to turn the grid on. And I'm going to line these up. And what I'm doing to create eight of them really quickly, you saw there how I um, copy and pasted them one after another, lining them up, and that's eight right there, real quick. Uh, and because now we can, um, uh, what I want to do is arrange this on the front panel. They're all stuck there at the at the origin point, but I want to arrange them in the panel going up like this. So. Instead of uh, going through and naming, like I, what you'd have to do in Oculus 3 is you'd have to like name each one of them and then you know do this like one, two, three, four, etc., uh, and go to the front panel and then sort them out and then move them around. Uh, now you can just directly apply their um, their coordinates from inside of here. So I know I want this to be exposed at 10, 10, um, and then I want this one at again. 10 from the x-coordinate and then 10 on the y-coordinate. So this is going to, these are all going to be 10 on the x-coordinate actually, so I can just select them all and do 10. And then this one is going to be 10 plus 30, which is 40. Because uh, they'll, they'll be, all the outputs uh, and inputs are spaced 30 uh, units apart. So 70, 100, 130. 160. And what I really should do is just, if you ever find yourself doing things repetitively, like, uh, okay, I, I have a module and I had eight inputs on it, um, you can either find another module that that was taken from and just copy and paste it into it, which I'm realizing now I should have done. Uh, it'll be a little smarter, but this is also kind of showing you from the beginning how to, how to do this. Uh, so that's not too bad, but um, you can also make a, uh, a module like I'm like I'm talking about here in my user folder when I have something that I want to, to use like the these five horizontal dots, 
right? If I want to use this over and over again, I can stick that in that folder uh, where you go up to Audulous Open Modules folder and you can put whatever you want in there and it will show up in that user folder. If you're on iOS, you'll have a modules folder that you can dump patches into in your file browser, same thing. Uh, if you find something that you're doing that is really repetitive, you're doing it all the time, it's better to just do that so you can just, you know, bring it up and, and okay, I have here eight inputs that are lined up like this and, and I can just work with them real quickly. But this way I'm showing you how to use the coordinate system. So 90 plus 30 to 20. Okay. See, so now they're all nicely arranged uh, right here. I want to do, do the same thing with at the outputs, but since... I know I have a module that has outputs like this, the split module. You can see how those are all lined up in the same way, right? I want these to just be on that side. So what I can do is just go into this module and go boop, boop, boop. Uh, you know what? Do I want these any lights? No, because I'm going to want audio coming out of this one, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going through and selecting just the um, outputs here, and I'm going to copy those and go into here, and I will space them out a little better, but you'll see right away that there they are. They just appear on the front panel, and I can even, um, don't have to go in and uh, change all of the Y coordinates. You can go like this and just drag it right across, and now... See how easy that was? And I could have done the same thing with the combined module. I know the combined module is the mirror opposite of this where it has eight inputs. And I could have just gone into that one and done that. But now you see how you can do it in <clears throat> these two different ways. Um, okay, so. And again, you, you don't have to use the, these conventions that I'm using where you're, you're sticking them. You, you want your inputs and outputs to be further away from each other or closer together or you want to go this way, uh, you know, have, have all of your inputs and outputs stacked at the bottom uh, of the module and the controls in the top. Do it however you want. It's fine. I, I really I really would encourage people, if you really want to really get into Audulous, rebuild your module library from scratch, everything, down to the attenuators. Rebuild it in the way that you like it, in your style, uh, and you can use what I've done in the module library as a guide, uh, or you can just sort of you know think of your head, think off the top of your head. How can I make this module? That's the best practice if you really, really want to get really good at using Modulus and also have a really deep understanding of how modules work in general. Is to to build your own library uh, from scratch, uh, including all these little utility modules too. So, okay, so I have these inputs and outputs. Let me real quick go through it. And I'm turning the, excuse me, um, the grid on and off, it's just so I can line these up. And, the thing about the grid is, it's dependent on how zoomed in you are. So if you zoom out a little bit, you see how the grid snaps to a different kind of resolution there, and then you might not be able to line something up in the same way. Uh, yeah, see, I can't, I can't get this one lined up. And so if you get into this kind of situation, you just go in a little bit, and then the resolution will increase, and then you can put it there. And then <clears throat> another thing that happens if you're zoomed out and you want to move something and you still have the grid on, then sometimes you can run into this problem where... Uh, you see how they're they're not um, keeping in their same alignment. That's because they're trying to snap to this other grid. What you do instead is either you can either turn off the grid and move something, and then zoom in, turn the grid back on, and then reposition everything, uh, or you can just simply zoom into that level that the grid is on and then move things uh, accordingly like that. Uh, I'm also using this option key to pan around, uh, holding the option key and panning, uh, so I don't have to zoom in and out all the time. Okay, so now, what am I gonna want? I'm gonna want, I'm gonna look at this sequencer, right? So let's see how the sequencers work, the sequencer. More or less, I think I want something similar to the way that these, um, uh, lights are going that I'd have these lights but instead of them I'd have them 
kind of here maybe next to the inputs and then you'd still be able to see the signals coming in with a little signal light like you have you know on, like on this one you'd have a any signal light that would respond as a gate or modulation or whatever uh, coming in but then you'd have these to indicate which input and which output is being selected um, the question is it's always this like do I want to make a smaller module uh, or do I want to kind of expand it have these big controls and I think on this one I might just want to do smaller controls. So I'm going to go to module and knob and go to style. I'm clicking on the knob, going to the inspector panel, clicking style and then mini um, and do a couple of them. So this, this, and this. So we have the begin, the end, and the direction. Uh, and these knobs are all stacked on top of each other in the origin point right there. So I just highlighted all of them to move them up here. And now I'm going to split them apart. And do something like this. All right. And you see, like, I don't want things to be too close to the, to the edge of a module. So often, I don't have all these ruled these design rules in my head, uh, I just look and compare them to other modules. So this is like, I want this to be the upper limit of where a knob is. I don't want it to be like there because that looks too close to the edge of the, the panel. Um, so I'm going to do this, this, and this. See, I want them to be equally spaced too, so maybe we can zoom in one more there. And then I also, hmm, I also want them to be modulatable probably too, just like these are having the modulation inputs. Um, okay. Oh, and of course, oh, I'm forgetting a vital ingredient here. We're going to need the sync and the gate input for both of these sequencers. Well, okay, maybe they can share. They can share sync and gate, but I need to add two more inputs for that. Okay, let me think. Okay, so, oops, I guess I turned the grid off. I'm just going to move these a little bit for the moment. And I'm going to have, wait more like this and this one was 220 so then 220 plus 30 is 250 to uh, 80 okay so usually th this is where you get into these kind of conundrums when you're designing a module okay usually I want to have like if there's the gate input and the sync output for these modules. I want those to be at the very bottom. So you have all of the, like, kind of the main signal flow running at the bottom of the modules, and then you have these other options um, going up. Uh, but it gets a little more complicated now they have these two. Maybe, would it be better to have those on the inside? No. Um, maybe it is unavoidable that I'll just have the gate inputs here and here instead. Because I, I don't know if I like this, where I'd have uh, scooch these up. Maybe, maybe that's okay. Maybe that is okay. Where this is the gate and the sync output, and then these are the inputs 1 through 8 and outputs 1 through 8 that we're going to be um, sequencing through. And maybe it's okay that there's nothing down here. Maybe I can think of something to do with those, but for now, that's that's my plan. But now that I've done this, I see that now the module is probably too um, too narrow. So I'm going to add some HP. Let's see, 120. Let's do 180. 18 HP. Let's see, 60. Let's see how that looks. What? It's 106. 60. So we haven't even begun to uh, 
dip into how the module works on the inside. We're just doing the panel right now, and anyone, any one of you can do this. You know, if you know how to move these, if you don't know how to design the inside of the module yet, that's fine, but you can at least start daydreaming about the type of module you'd want, what kind of controls you'd want, what kind of inputs and outputs you have, and then you could even, you know, upload that, that kind of blank, um, you have nothing on the inside, but you have the panel designed. You can upload that at the Discord, at the forum, and be like, hey guys, this is the kind of functionality that I want uh, out of my module. How do I build the inside of it? And we could help you do that. Okay, so now I think, I think it's got to be even bigger because I'm going to have these lights here coming down. And I'll add that in a second. And then I'm going to need two sets of these controls with modulation inputs. It's a lot to ask for out of this small of a package. So 180, is that enough? Maybe. What I'm going to do is add the lights now. And that will give me a better sense of the size. So <clears throat> I, again, the lights that I want to add here, I want to add these any lights that can show um, any kind of signal coming through there. So that is a uh, in my user folder any light. But wait, no, this is just showing the, that one's just showing the, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, yeah. that's right, that's right. Brain fart for a second, this will work. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, oops, turn the grid on, line these up. This is, um, I, I kind of breezed over it for a second. This is a, you know, a sub-module here um, where going into here, there is inside of this little package a light node or RGB light node. And then I have the input going to R. So when the wave is going from zero to one, it's turning the red, red uh, part on and then it's inverted so that when it's going below uh, zero, that swing of that, that cycle below zero turns the blue light on, and I can um, demonstrate that real quickly with a oscillator node. Actually, let's just do it with a node. Uh, synth oscillator. One, one here. Okay. Oh, uh, process. I have to turn the processing on. Okay. So um, that's what it'll look like when you have audio coming through, so that it'll be. Uh, kind of flashing red and uh, blue. So when it dips below, uh, it's actually, the signal's getting inverted, and so what, what the light node sees is the red node sees a little peak coming up here, and then the blue node sees, uh, the, the blue input sees a little peak going up there um, from a little mass trickery. If that doesn't make sense, just kind of look at it uh, a little more on the inside um, and probe around with meters and stuff and it will, you'll, you'll figure it out. It's not too complicated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we only have eight of these. All right. And then these will be the gate and the sync inputs. So I go to gate, uh, light, and sync. Whoops. Sync. From our brain, so this will be the sync light, and the gate light will be on the bottom. I like, again, I like to put the very the most important um, signal to that module should be at the bottom. Uh, so on an oscillator, uh, the you know output, the very bottom output will always be audio. Um, the bottom input will be um, octave or. Is it octave or is it synced? I put sync at the bottom. No, I think I put octave at the bottom, yeah. Because you don't want to, right, for example, the VCO. Yeah, okay, so in, in the way that it's ordered, you, you want to kind of have, like for in, in my mind, you have this main signal flow that's going really flat at the bottom of all the modules. 
uh, if this was all, if this O was always up here, that you're always going to use a pitch. You usually always going to use a pitch with an oscillator. And so why would you be like jumping up here and then going down out of here? So that's why you keep the most important signal flow here, then kind of uh, you know less important as you go up um, this side, and then these other inputs kind of are contextual to the other controls that they're associated with. So we have the the sync is needs to be readjusted, so it's at 40. And then the gate is at 1010, 10, right? Okay, so sync and gate. Or gate and sync right there. Um, then again, are these all at 10? Yeah, cool. Uh, so they're already uh, positioned at X10. And then, um, okay. Excuse me, this little symbol here just is kind of represents any signal can go into here um, in the same way that you know have this s stands for sync even though it's a, it's a gate signal but it's specifically used to synchronize modules then the gate um, here will have a gate input at that input okay so what i want to do here is reposition these to the equal the same coordinates so there's 70 Again, I could probably just pull this out of the combined module, um, but we can do this for practice anyway. So 130, 130 right? 130, yeah. 130, 160, 90, 20, 50, and 280. Did I do that right? Yes, okay. So these are all lined up, and um, out of these ones, ah, okay, yeah, the split one has an interesting thing because it, it actually uses the canvas node to animate these, um, you know, uh, whether or not these are selected, uh, but we'll skip over that for now. Okay. So those are the input lights, uh, and then I'm going to have a separate set of input uh, of lights here that will show the um, count over here. And all I need to do is, I'm, I'm just taking this because it, this is already kind of wired up in the inside in a certain way. This is a little messy. I could, I could have done this better. This is actually a, a good moment to show you um, this positioning, repositioning technique. So they're not um, all on the same Y level, right? So I can just press a zero. No, that doesn't make any sense. Why are they? Oh, that's the exposed position. Whoops. I always do this. Okay, hold on. Okay, yeah. Creating a new one. Uh, I want to. I want these all to line up um, together. So I go to the Y position and just press whatever number. I just press zero usually and then enter, and then they will align themselves like that. Um, I could go back and fix this later, but see this okay so what I'm gonna do here is this one should be at zero zero yep uh, zero zero and we'll see why in a second that's important um, and I'm going to just arrange them quickly I don't have to do it based on the numbers um, because the reason the reason I was doing that before is because when we come up here you create all of these new they're all in the same spot and then I'm dragging them out you know this way and this way and I don't know exactly which one is which which one's associated with which and then this is a way to um, do that so what I'm going to do here is line these up so that they line up right with the inputs there so this is going to be our indicator that shows us um, which input is selected, but should I do, is it from the bottom? I think I want to do one at the top rather than one at the bottom. So it's like one, two, three, four, uh, this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I didn't strip it for a second. I thought maybe I didn't have enough. Um, so uh, at this level, what I'm doing is I'm moving around the submodule um, UI that's inside. So if I want to move these lights individually, I have to go back here and basically rearrange them so that, uh, okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to move this over by one and then move this up to the top where that one is and we're going to 
um, reverse all of them. So this one goes down here. Those are lined up here, 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 and then here. Okay, and then that should work. That should be the reversed version. Um, just to check that I didn't, in my haste, um, get out of those. So, wait, did I? The count. The times. Times. So, and I, we'll use this. Okay, yes. Okay, so I can see that they're going in order now, right? Um, okay, so that's that display. And I'm going to copy and, whoops, uh, it, you have to copy and paste that inside of the module here. Um, let's just, I'm going to scooch this over uh, to 60. I don't know exactly where I'm going to put it, but this way, so I know they're not on top of each other. I, I, when I pop out to the panel, I know this one is going to be further to the right. Uh, yep, right there. So then I can move that one over here. Uh, and this will be our indicator for which output is selected. Okay, so see, I'm seeing right away, this still looks a little, a little too cramped with all of this stuff going on here, I think. I want some controls at the top. It'd be kind of weird if they were, they were all in the center, but how am I gonna do that if, you know, I, I'm trying not to waste space. I'm, not, I'm trying to make this as compact as possible, but also make it still friendly to use. Um, so, how should I do that? Okay. I think I'm going to increase this to, let's say 220. Um, all of the modules are multiples, or are even, except for, for the sequencer. You can see the width there. The width on this one is 250, and that just happens to be because of the way that if you're using, um, if you have eight equal controls like this, and you're putting them on this grid, and, and you want them to be centered in there, it's easier to do that uh, when the module is has an even number of width versus, an, uh, oh sorry, an odd number of width versus an even number of width. We might run into the similar thing here, but I doubt it. Whoops, ah, there's that problem. See that problem where you're moving things around and I'm on a higher level grid than it was created on? So go down to here. Okay, two, three. Let's start to get, let's get six knobs in here. And then there's a nice thing I can show you. There's in, uh, in general, the, the knobs are kind of colored. Like if they're controlling something that's an input, they're blue to match the blue inputs. Um, like this, and then if they're controlling something that's an output, then they're red. Uh, and then if they're doing something to the signal while it is inside of the module, then it's green. Um, that's the sort of thinking in my head behind color coding stuff. Again, you can use whatever you want. That's just that's just what I'm using in here. You know what I should really do, and I haven't done yet, is save. <laughs> I haven't saved this yet, um, and that's foolish of me. Okay, just realized that. So sequential. Uh, switch. Okay. And what's what's cool too is that you know you can maybe I might make a, a tile version of this too, and that's always, that's a fun challenge because you you know when you're making a module you can sky's the limit whatever kind of um, features you want on it. But if you're thinking okay, how do I make a, a tile a small version of this, then you have to get down to what is the core functionality I want to bring to a tile that can fit in this little tiny package. There might be something where it can do. You know, it just goes forward through four different um, inputs, right? And then, it, and then this is the gate, and then it sends it to the output. That's probably what it would, it would end up being the core functionality of a sequential switch. Um, okay, so I think I can just go pull these off. They're different colors, so I can easily uh, differentiate one from the other. Okay, so begin this. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. Um, this is the begin, so do add, or uh, blue, wait, why can't I do that, come on, and then we'll have this one do green, 
Ah, uh, maybe maybe they have to be the same. Ah, uh, I'm just coming across this for the first time. I think they have to be the same already for you to be able to change all of them at once together. Interesting. Okay. So these reflect this uh, beginning. Oh, that one should green, obviously green. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe this. Maybe now I'm thinking now. Maybe this knob should be blue. I don't know. Um, the reason I have these color coded green and red is that they match up with this green and red, and you can kind of have that visual indicator there. Um, oh, do I have these? I have these mixed up. It's okay. So blue, green, red, blue, green, red. Okay. And again, um, I'm going to have modulation inputs for these two, and so you know I'd like them to be across from each other like this, but maybe I have to sacrifice and just have one above and one below. So like this will be the first one. You know, this will be for the input, and then this one will be for the output, like this. And then maybe have the modulation inputs down here and down here for these these two. Okay, this is starting to take shape, I think. And you know, I have some dead space. Oh, of course, gotta name the module. Do sequential sequential switch right here. Um, so that that's the name that pops up in the top of the module. I kind of like that. You you can you could leave this blank if you wanted to put your name of your module on the module. Uh, whoops like this somewhere with a text node inside uh, but the way the library structure here is so that you know the height of the module plus the the name uh, with a little bit of distance in between the two so they're not squishing each other visually uh, they they add up together like this to equal the same height See, I'm, I'm still designing the front panel, and I, once once we get this down, the, the rest of it will actually go pretty quickly. Um, this, this can sometimes take the longest, figuring out what you want it to look like and what you want it to kind of function like. And so what I like here is this separation between these two, that they're not all in the same um, level of uh, size. So maybe I might take this, the green one, and make it a regular size knob. Whoops, regular, standard, standard, and like this, and then maybe have them come up. Okay, maybe have this be in line right there. And that might take up more room and make it feel like I'm I have less dead space in uh, on the panel as well. Okay. Maybe yeah, both like that. Okay, but here I'm coming in with a excuse me another problem where I want to drop these down. Input. I'm just going to highlight that input so we can see the size. Right there. I'm going to very carefully select just that. So I want this to be dropped down from there, but then not overlap with that knob there. Okay. And I don't want these to be down at the bottom here. I want them to, because I want these inputs and outputs of the whole module at, at, to, to really, I don't want this one to be down on this level. Like at least it's got to stay um, above this a little bit uh, just to kind of visually in, reinforce that the um, these are the main inputs and outputs of the module that are flowing the signal through uh, the module. So. I might not be able to get around that this just needs to be a wider module. 
or or here's another option. Um, we'll go back to making these small, and then everything just gets lined up like this. Move this over to the side for now. Like this, and then this way you'll have the modulation inputs. Um, uh, to the side, and we can go to one of the tiles that I know have one of those. Should be, uh, I'll just browse through them real quick. Um, where is this? Yeah, this one, the delay. It's going to have this, this modulation at the side, but I need to, fl I need to flip it around. Uh, or do I? I'm gonna put the. Okay. Here we go. Well, yeah. I'll show you why. Why we need. We actually need to get this knob uh, in a second. But uh, for now, while we're just designing the panel, keep it simple. Okay. So, oh, that one is right there over that knob, and I want to. I have to move everything over. So, one sec. What, what I'm going to do is actually here, I'm going to go down to these two. For a second, I'm going to delete them. Now, I'm going to go here and uh, move this there, copy and paste this, and then undo, undo. And I believe that, yeah, is back now. Now, deleting that and copy and pasting it, and it's going to be in this new position over there where it's not uh, stacked on top of that. Uh, there. Okay. So. Okay, that I could maybe work with this, yes. Where everything is, where these knobs are in the center, and then the modulation inputs for each of these knobs is directly across from it like that. Okay. Now, okay. It does look a little funky if there's nothing up here. What could, maybe I could think of something to put up there later. I, I won't just. I'm trying to keep this as engaging as possible so that you could be watching this the entire time and be getting something out of <clears throat> every moment of you watching this, but also there's a limit to, uh, sometimes you also just need to sit and stare at a, uh, at a module to think of what you want it to end up like. Okay. So, oops. That does appear, yeah, that's lined up already. Is it the same? Not the same space. I want the same spacing between these three right here. And I wish I could do, I wish I could just like kind of nudge it over with the um, arrow keys, like this whole group. Maybe a, maybe a Taylor, Taylor will add that at some point. Uh, yeah, and here's, here's another thing. This, this little thing is sort of in the middle. Um, these little dots that associate the input with the knob are aren't on a grid that you can is you can zoom in close enough to you. so that's a little bit of a problem but there we go now I moved that over how much is that that's 70 to 280 70 to 280 so I think I take this off oh, let's take the grid off there we go I can move that over by two whoops no not y X over two, yeah, okay. That's that little fiddly thing, like where I'm, I'm being really, I don't know, uh, really exact about how I want these uh, to be, and you can get to that level, or you can, you can arrange things in a way that doesn't take this amount of kind of care when you're, when you're designing a module um, panel. Uh, it would be certainly a little easier to work with, so, uh, ah, I have to go to the inside. I'm gonna move these off to the side for a second. Oh, and again, <clears throat> because this is a whole kind of like little complex thing that I'm doing, 
uh, I want to move this thing over for a second, uh, and I will copy and paste it. So, uh, whoops, I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to copy and paste this. Now I'm pressing Command Z, and putting it back where it was. But if I go back and create a new one, now this new one's going to be created in that spot where I copied and pasted it, and I can bring it down here. And I'll do the same with uh, the others. So, okay. Um, for now, for right now, right now, just so you don't have to see me um, reposition all these, which takes a little while, I will just do this quickly. And maybe after the stream, I will go through and really hammer in on all of the little details <clears throat> of the UI. Uh, because that's that's a boring part to watch and you get the idea what you have to do you have to kind of zoom in and sometimes even nudge things by coordinates um, and you know what I'm doing this in a silly way and I'm, I'm this would be better if I do it the other way you saw how I did that but I can just copy and paste the whole knob I kind of got attached to having these knobs the way they are but uh, now, let's just go ahead and, if we're, if we're going to go to this level, um, let's go ahead and get the uh, knob with modulation input. Okay, so this is another little thing that I created already that, <clears throat> if you go to module, what, module, and knob, uh, you can see the modulation uh, input to this knob reflected in the knob position. So if the knob is turned all the way down, uh, you can see this is this knob is like modulation coming in, like say an LFO. LFO. And that LFO is now going through the whole range of that knob. If I just have it just a little bit, it's just gonna go through just at maximum that much. And then I can add some offset with this knob and then you can see at all times where the actual where, where the actual position of the knob is according to whatever control it's controlling. Uh, and then it's always in this little kind of off red color so that if you come in here and you select red there, then you will still be able to differentiate it from that uh, lighter, brighter red uh, there. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna use this together with this one and I'm going to position that knob where it's supposed to be here. And we're gonna do the same kind of thing uh, where I'm going to move all of this, uh, whoops, copy and paste it here, Command Z, and then now I can create multiple ones of these and then move them around as a group, which will be a little easier to reposition later. I could even I could even do the whole two things like this. Watch, I'll make them really. But I don't want them to be this close together. I maybe want them to be like this. Yeah. Maybe. Is that too far away? I'm sorry if this is boring, but this this really is a big part of of what um, creating modules is like, where you're you're trying to think about both the design and about uh, like how it works on the inside and about how it's going to be on the panel because that really influences how people are using these things. And I realize now that I put these, if I, I was concentrating on this, this, and this being kind of lined up together, now the knob is into the center of the panel. Okay, I'm getting a little into the weeds with this. so. I'm just going, I'm going to finish the module's functionality and you'll be able to play with it as it looks um, the way it does, but it will probably end up looking a little differently in the end. Um, so, did I do that right? No. Okay. So I need to go here and unlock and I'm just going to do this to, to, whoops, to very quickly. That doesn't seem like it. Create six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then, whoops. There. Okay. 
So those will be all three, or all six of the controls for both sequencers here. Okay, and let's just go ahead and do this. Oh, good. Right in the center, maybe up. So uh, we're going to go into each one of these. I should have created three and three, but so you can see it. Where I'm going inside and selecting the knob. This will be green. Uh, okay, so we're doing begin is is wait begin is green. Begin is green, and then ah, going one level up too much. Green blue. I do want to change that in the other one. Green, blue, and red. Green. Blue. And red. Okay. Okay. Green, blue, red. Green, blue, red. And that um, will co correspond to this. And I'll probably go back later and change this to blue. This, this really should be a blue knob. Um, I don't know. It, just so, just so they're a little different. Um, okay. So, yeah, these aren't hard and fast rules about the colors. Uh, I You don't want to convey um, too much critical information through colors because if people are colorblind, uh, they won't be able to pick up on that information. So this is just sort of an ornament uh, to the to the module that doesn't, you don't really need to, to know it. And plus, if you, if you move this, you don't need to understand, but there is a, there's a difference in kind of the brightness between these two that you can distinguish them between. But uh, you you can move this knob and immediately you see which one it's it's connected to. Um, same thing with here. Uh, so you don't necessarily need that color information, but it does reinforce it for people who can't see color. Okay. Um, okay, I'm liking this. Maybe I want to split these apart just a little bit so I know that they're, yeah, it's like two and two. Yeah, there we go. That's what it was missing. It was a little too scrunched together. Maybe like that. Okay. Okay. Um, that looks good. I could maybe have a dedicated output where it's always just outputting. Um, One, you know, like I, I, you could you could have this sequencer going, but then this one was would always just be putting outputting this one output here. And maybe that can solve this kind of feeling of something being empty down there. But I'll I'll come back to that. So we've got the front panel uh, down. We've got these now to business. Finally, we're in however many like an hour into the stream. Um, we'll get into this counter. So, move this to the side for a second. This will be one sequencer over here. Uh, real quickly, we'll just come in here. And I'm, what I like to do sometimes is just grab the entire inside of a module, and I'm going to copy and paste it into this one just so I can kind of compare the two and you know wire this up in the same way. Count, begin, and OK. Then we have the gate. <clears throat> Put this aside for a second. The gate. The sink. Gate. Reset. That, that, that should be sink uh, on there. This was some of the things you'll see might even change by the time you're actually watching this video, but. Uh, I, I designed the library. Uh, it was kind of in between names for things, um, and you know, settled on something. But then, you know, by the time I settled on it, then I would have had to have gone back and, and change everything and all these other um, lower level m nodes and stuff. And I want to go through the whole library and go into them, and so that they have all of these little like interpatch uh, commentary, uh, so that you ex it explains what's going on at every single node. Uh, so that you can really, really understand um, how all of this stuff is put together, sort of like comments in code. Um, 
and that, that'll be a little project in and of itself. Uh, but I think that'll be a good update for everyone, especially people who are really interested in building and really interested in drilling down on things to understand how everything is uh, created. So the begin control and end control, begin and end, and then this one is the direction. So, right. Even though they're on the front panel, they're in a different order, this is sort of conceptually, when you have the begin and end and direction, the begin and end kind of together, direction. Max count is gonna be seven. Okay, and that's just hardwired in there because that's the maximum steps that you can go in here. Um, we're controlling the max step from the front panel with the end control. And it's the reason it's not called, uh, yeah, you can see all this chaos because this, um, this UI is still in here. The reason it's not called, we'll look over at this one, uh, the max step, like it is in some, some things, is that the end can actually be over here. So the begin it begins over here and goes over here. And that's another way to reverse the direction. Uh, there's this way, you know, you can, this is reverse, this is forwards, or you can go like this. And then if you're going backwards, and then this is backwards, it'll actually go forwards, because <laughs> it's kind of competing against each other. Okay. So that's just a particular of the way this counter works. Um, okay, so everything's kind of wired up like it's supposed to be. Right. Then what, what I'm going to do is from this count, the count go through the mux, and I will delete all of these. Right. And I'll go through whoops, these. And I might actually, I spent all this time lining these up, and I might actually put them on top of each other, uh, like you'll see in a second. But that's okay just doing this to test and I skipped over one there we go. okay cool all right now uh, oof, I'm gonna get rid of this now this should work as a sequential switch um, for this side going to this modulation output and we'll just test it real quick um, what we'll do is we'll create some LFOs and just get a bunch of them. Do this. We're going every other, I mean not every other, like this, one, every four. Okay. And then just to change the order a little bit so we can differentiate them. And here, and here. So we'll do different speeds. And we'll take a clock. Where did that clock go? Here we go. Okay, this should be the beginning and end. And move through there. Now we have our output waveform. Oh, no select. We have to the count there. And that should be it. Yep. Okay. There you go. Uh, this is the sequential, sequential switch. This is the one side of it. And it's going to be really easy. We just do the same thing, but uh, on the other side. But this, this is like completes the functionality. Uh, like I mentioned, again, the creating the the UI is the thing that takes absolutely the most time for me at least um, because a lot of times well I guess it depends on the module sometimes you're you, you're if you don't know how the module works on the inside researching that and and figuring out how you're going to implement that takes a long time too um, but you know I'm I'm definitely I'm not going to bore you anymore with more UI stuff but I definitely will tweak this more outside of the stream so that uh, this this is not going to end up what it, it this is not going to be what it looks like in the module library probably but it will be like this in the patch so uh, okay so just so you understand again what this is doing we have these different LFOs here that are coming in through all of these different inputs and they're getting routed to this one output here and what this is doing is it's switching between these different LFOs and you can tell which um, 
which output is selected by this blue uh, dot here. And I can you know, change the direction like this, so it's going backwards now. Um, so this is the start and the end. Or I can also have this cool, it's the kind of random function where sometimes it'll go backwards. Uh, you know, 90% of the time it's going forwards every clock pulse, but 10% of the time it'll choose to go backwards. This is sort of 50-50, it'll go forwards or backwards. Right. So, and you can also just go backwards like this too. There's two different ways to, to do this. Now, we're going to do the same thing with the other side. And, whoops, whoops. So I'm going to, this is going to share the gate and reset the, the sync signal, um, but it's going to have a different meter there. Uh, it's also going to have a max count of seven. but then it's going to have its own begin and end controls. Just do what we did before. We're kind of moving this down here. Because this is the order that they appear in on the, the sub-module. So begin, end, and direction. Then we're going to use a demux. Do I actually already have one? No. Okay. That was probably in the upper level of the patch. Eight. Okay. And then we're going to send this to this input here. And the select from the count. You can't read this. I, I, I can barely read it on my monitor too, but I just know that this top um, output of this module is the count, and I can just drag it from there. Um, oops. Okay. Now... So, I'm going to begin, and you can see now there, this is cool, this is where the fun part gets in, right? You have this output being routed, this input being routed to that output there. Um, and you can imagine lots of cool uses for this. I mean, one that immediately jumps to mind is that you have gates coming in here, and then these gates are getting... Uh, put out into different, you have like eight different uh, drum modules or something, and so the gate will be like hitting one drum module at a time, uh, but then, you know, uh, you, you'll see. There, there are cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, I might, on the next Wired Up with Mark, I will make a, I will, uh, make a patch using this finished module that will show you some of the cool things it can do. Um, okay, so I'll go back in and finish this up. So go output. What I'm going to need to do is also put these um, here on the other side, like another set of these lights. And this is this will really cement what it's doing uh, for you, because you'll see it'll only go to one output at a time, right? And it's switching between uh, the different ones. So these outputs are now on exposition 210. So I can just go to 10, right? Because the module is 220 wide, and then they're 10 in from the other side, so it's 210. These are all at 210 now, and that should work. Yep, like that. Oh, um, except for this one. What is this one doing? Why? Am I missing one? What's up with that? Hold on. I'm a little confused about what happened there. Okay, so these are all 210. Okay. Oops. 210. There, okay, I don't know, there was a missing light there for a second. Um, okay, maybe I accidentally deleted it. Three, four, five, whoops. Five, six, seven. Okay. 
So again, you have all of these different signals coming in here, and then now it's getting routed to just one output at a time on this side. This one is always routing whatever inputs are here. Um, and I think that's, that's sort of the functionality that I'll leave it with. I would, love, I would love just this symmetry in my brain. I would love to think of another output that I could put here that would take up this space. And maybe I will after I get off the stream, but I'm not just gonna sit here and make you watch through me wondering what that'll be. Um, so I will put this in its right place. And then I'll show you. So you, you, you've made a module, right? Oh, actually, I'm going to show you this little trick here. I want to have um, labels for these controls, of course, uh, but they're small now. So uh, I might not end up doing this the exact same way. Um, but what you can do is, right, I'm going to select that text in there. Go to here, and I'll definitely clean up the inside of this module so it'll look nice and neat uh, and packed, but I won't make you sit through that either. Um, I mean, it, once you see it, you can get the idea of what you, you're doing. So I'll go up one level, and then now I don't want, I don't like this when it kind of goes across the whole module. So there's, there's some options we have. We have abbreviations, right? Be, the B for beginning. Uh, and then, uh, and I'll probably go with this, uh, honestly, because this, this, this works fine for a module like this. But um, there are other modules, like the clock divider, uh, this one, that uh, I, I thought it would be better to have um, little text here that is shrunk down that says exactly what it is, right? I, I think that this, the B and E will be fine and a little direction knob here. It could, because the controls, it's immediately apparent what this is doing because you can see it reflected here. Whereas the PWM might not be as, as uh, obvious. Uh, uh, and I wanted the PWM, like as a capitalist, it was too big. Um, and the mute, uh, I wanted to, you know, what is M? M stands for modulation. And so I can't abbreviate it as M. Uh, so I had to shrink this down a little bit. Same thing with like rotate. It's a little tough to figure out what rotate is doing if you uh, don't, if you are not reading this this uh, input over here. But I'd like ideally a module should be totally discoverable from its panel if you, if it can be. So there's some modules that are just too complex that you you have to read the manual about it. But there's a lot of things that it's cool if you can just turn a knob and be like, oh, that's what that does. You know, uh, that's that's good uh, good design to shoot for if you can um, so what I did there to do that is you go inside this and you use actually a canvas node so uh, you just um, we'll, we'll go over the canvas node a whole other set of tutorials it's a whole, whole other thing but this is written with Lua code and you have a color that's set here a variable that's a um, it's not like a tuple it's sort of like a quadruple or something. You have these set of values and you, uh, this is an RGBA value, the A standing for the um, transparency. And you, I have this scale, so it's scaling it down, making it smaller, so I can do both. This is like how the text node would read, but then this is half size, smaller. And you're writing the text in here, like whatever, there and then assigning the color of gray to that. Uh, so we could do, you know, uh, if, if we had a different color, you could change the colors like in here. So let's do one, right? You can see it's got a little green tinge there. Zero, right? So again, we'll go over this in another channel, uh, in another tutorial, but that's a way to create differently sized labels. You can also, I mean, of course you could, you could make them bigger too, like that. Um, so that's an option, but for here, just to keep it simple, and and because the text node uses a fraction, fraction, tiny fraction, little less CPU than the canvas node does, I'll always offer the text node when I can. So I'm gonna go into this, the B, and uh, whoops, I go to this this level 
and arrange it so, okay, that's right directly in the center. And just add that. It, I'm copy and pasting that particular one because it's going to be centered in that same spot. Uh, so it'll get me in the ballpark. Maybe I can do that. Maybe that's too wide. Let's see. No, nope, that looks good. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, and here to end. Oh, I, f I put them in the wrong one. <laughs> okay. Uh, one second. Sorry. I was thinking about the way that they were arranged on the front panel and not how they are right here. Okay, so end. Of course. Doo -doo -doo. I know there's um. What's the shortcut for for this one? Uh, the shortcut for edit my. Oh yeah, command D. Okay. I, sh I should use that more. I didn't. I'm just used to clicking up there. All right, so I, I won't make you sit through uh, me doing the rest because uh, everything might change, but now you get the idea of uh, when, I, when I move this knob around, now the B moves around with it. Uh, otherwise, you, you, you wouldn't want it to, you, you want to, if you want a, a label inside of a knob, put it in its own sub patch like this, and then you expose it uh, to the panel using this right here. Uh, and then you hide the inputs and outputs because if you don't hide that input and output, you'll actually see that on the front panel, which you don't want. Uh, so you just hide those inputs and outputs and now you just see the knob there and then that moves around as a unit, which is really useful uh, so that every time you move the knob, you don't have to like also move, be careful that you're moving the text or whatever icon or something you have inside of the knob that's uh, showing what it is. Okay. Um, like I said, this is this is it. This is what this module does. Here, I can sync it up again so that they're they're in sync, right? So you can see now that they're two sequencers running together. And say if I have the offset by one, you'll see that this one is going phasing with the other one, right? And eventually it'll come back around and, and be in phase again. But uh, this is a useful little module, and it's kind of like, it's like two sequencers. You could actually use it as a sequencer by um, just having, you know, something come out of here. You could take this, I don't know, what, why don't we hear it real quick, uh, just for some fun, to a, uh, let's see, quantizer. And let's get rid of all the rest of this junk. This is kind of the stuff from before. We need this. We have the clock, we have these LFOs. Do it a little slower. And I'm gonna do a little, like the mini synth, just because it's fast to use. And uh, mod to octave, whoops, I have to be in my relation to octave. Converter. Okay, so modulation to octave, octave to octave, and we'll get a output. And just for fun, a reverb. Let's see. These are all cool reverbs, and which one do I like a lot? I like this one, I think. Okay. Turn this down at first, so you never quite know if it's gonna blast you. Oh, whoops, okay, yeah, of course I need to, just like that. So these LFOs are creating the note values that are coming into this, getting translated into an octave signal to the quantizer. So let's put it into a scale, this isn't chromatic right now. Expand it a little bit and actually pull it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
if you're interested in building the more of these you watch the more that you'll learn about how uh, at least my workflow works in, in Audulous. you can find something that works uh, for you as well uh, you know you it, it's not like I'm I do it the correct way and other people are wrong or, or you're wrong or whatever you I just have been using Audulous for many years and I found some quick ways to make something um, taking something from my mind and put it onto uh, into Audulous you know couple, I, don't, I can't remember, it's maybe in two hours or something, I've made this module and it works, and all that's left to do is to really fine-tune the, the UI uh, so that it looks like I want it to look. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, just join me in the next one uh, where I will be showing off the finished version of this module and we'll do some cool drum stuff and show some different ways to use sequential switches in your modular synthesizer patches in Audulous. Okay. Thanks. Bye, guys.